I wanted to talk a little bit about automatic writing today. And automatic writing is something that's been practiced in China for a very long time. And it became quite popular in the West in the 19th century. It's not the first time it was in the West. Uh, John Dee actually used automatic writing to receive uh, the Enochian language, but it became particularly popular when people like uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and his wife started organizing some great big seance sessions with really famous people and so on and so forth. I think Harry Houdini ended up debunking what they were doing, but um, uh, yeah, it became very, very popular. Now over here on the screen I've got some Chinese automatic writing. Uh, that seems very deliberate to me, very intentional. Now if we move over uh, to, for example, this one, you can see that all of these words are perfectly formed, perfectly understandable. This isn't at all what my own automatic writing ends up looking like. I admit that when I use automatic writing after having invoked some kind of entity, the qualities of what I'm writing do tend to look a little bit different. This, I think, is a little bit closer to what I end up writing when I do automatic writing. Again, I do automatic writing not to channel the dead or to find out what such and such a spirit has to uh, say to me, I do automatic writing just to get in touch with my unconscious mind and uh, sometimes it's got some interesting things to say to me and sometimes it's just gibberish um, and uh, well I thought maybe it could be fun to uh, to give you an idea of what it actually looks like when I am doing automatic writing. I try to not look at my hand when I'm when I'm writing. I just uh, hold my pen quite firmly, which is why I use a ballpoint pen rather than a, a fountain pen, right? Um, I, I'm not worried about pressing too hard on a ballpoint pen. So what I'll do is that I'll start off with a short meditation, a very, very short meditation focusing on my breath, just to free my mind and calm it down and allow uh, the deeper layers of it to come through a little bit. And then I just hold my pen quite firmly and allow it to do writing-like movements, if that makes sense. And then what comes out of that is, is actually where the real work starts, actually interpreting what the squiggles that come out might actually mean. Here we go. All right, so I've got two lines here. Let's see what we've got. Um, and if there's anything that can be worked out. Now, something quite fun that I very often realize is that um, uh, I went to school in France, right, from the age of five to the age of um, 18. And a lot of the writing that I have done in my life uh, has been done in French because when I moved away from France, I started typing, right? So a lot of my my hand movements end up writing kind of French-looking words. Let's see if we've got anything here. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the words obviously uh, are not naturally looking like something, but this does. I would say that this is probably not really automatic writing, right? Um, uh, but uh, that, that's a skeptic in me. I, you, you know I, <laughs> I am rather skeptic. Um, but, uh, but what I try to do is to get an impression of what the word might mean. Um, uh, this area here looks a little bit like magician to me. And uh, uh, I don't know, maybe something like uh, met meta, meta, meta something, metaphysics, meta. Um, uh, uh, is this something like trium something? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, is this something like um, enth, enth, enth something? Enth is, uh, is, is divinity, isn't it? Um, 
it looks like enteogram or something but uh, i'm not sure if that's a if that's a, a, an actual real word but uh, you could you could certainly imagine of you know uh, words of god or something like this enteogram and then um live something like that yeah and then what we do we have here so they're obviously not complete sentences that they're, they're not um a sentence that you could read but they give me an impression of something that could be of use to me or or, or may not be of any use whatsoever um is this lex over here L law Entry, in uh, in trance, in trance, something like that. This looks like maybe. I don't know. This makes me think of the French word bien, which is good. Um, and maybe great. I don't know. Soothing, so soothing. Is this soothing? Not sure. Anyway, there we go. There's some uh, a, a, a particularly poor example of some automatic writing, but um, nevertheless an example, um, uh, just to give you an idea of how I use automatic writing to find out if my unconscious mind has got anything useful to tell me. Sometimes it does. Sometimes, like today, it doesn't. Um, uh, or maybe because I'm recording a video, I, I can't work out yet what was important about this, these particular words or about this particular message. And later on in the day, I, I'll probably think to myself, my goodness, no, this is a really clever, very important message for me. And, uh, and that's fine as well. Uh, but yeah, it's a little exercise that I enjoy doing and I thought you might enjoy checking out what I do for yourself and uh, yeah maybe giving it a go for yourself. Now what about you? Have you ever tried any form of automatic writing? Maybe you've actually channeled an entity who has written intelligible sentences for you. Or maybe like me you use the process more as a scrying method, a way to take a moment to find out if there are any messages your unconscious mind wishes to bring to your attention. Either way, let me know down below what your attitude to automatic writing is. As you can see, I find it quite an interesting process. And the messages that come through actually quite often have some very interesting relevance to my current situation. I certainly recommend trying it a few times before making up your mind about it. As I say, the results can often be quite surprising. Let me just take a couple of seconds maybe to point out the join button next to the subscribe button down there for anyone interested in the Foolish Fish memberships, which give you access to a number of perks, including access to the Foolish Fish Discord chat server, which is by now a pretty huge repository of information on a very wide variety of esoteric and occult topics, where members get to ask any question they might have on any given subject and have an entire community of like-minded practitioners from many different backgrounds and traditions offering helpful suggestions or sharing their own experiences. Now, I have been made aware that people using iOS devices have been having trouble joining the memberships. I'd recommend visiting my channel page in a Chrome browser if you're having trouble yourself. Memberships start at just $2 a month and you can find the instructions on how to join the Discord server once you're a member down in the description of any of the more recent videos. Do take a moment to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video as you probably know that really helps these videos to get suggested to a wider audience which in turn of course makes it more sustainable for me to keep making these videos and if you haven't done so already don't forget to click the little bell button next to the subscribe button so that you get shown my videos on your YouTube homepage more regularly. As always my deepest gratitude goes out to every one of you for taking the time to watch and especially to the amazing community of members who make this channel sustainable. I am always infinitely grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching and see you very soon again with another video.